guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a curry duck recipe. I know I have two videos on my channel. One of them was pretty old. I did that in Trinidad and I had just started off my channel. So I wanted to do an updated one. So this is my version of curry duck. Batman has his version on my channel as well, so go check that out. I will leave links to those two videos in the info above. So go check out this video. So if you want to see how to make a really perfect curry duck then keep watching so I have a whole duck here a large duck actually and it's roasted and cut up but it's cut up pretty big so I'm gonna cut it up a little smaller as soon as I'm finished cleaning it so what I like to do is pull off most of the loose skin and I try to cut most of the fat off so sometimes there's a lot of fat under the skin so I try to cut that off as well but when you cook duck you really want to leave the skin on it because that's where all the flavor is so I just try to cut off most of the fat that I see and if there's any loose skin then I pull that off but if the skin is really tough and it's connected to the meat really tightly then I just leave that skin on. So after cleaning out all the fat and the skin, I'm going to cut my duck into smaller pieces because they cut it a little too big for me but if you're happy with the size that they cut it then now you want to go ahead and start washing it. So to wash the duck I like to lay it out in the sink or you can put it in a basin but make sure that when you lay it out that each piece is going to get washed properly. So I like to use some flour to get that really slippery membrane off the meat and it takes away that really fresh or meaty smell. So after you wash it, you're going to notice that it's going to look very, very clean and it's going to feel good as well. It's not going to feel as slippery as it was before because the flour pulls all the impurities out as well as that membrane on the outside of the meat. While the meat is soaking in that lemon water, now I'm going to make the seasonings to season up the duck. To my chopper, I'm adding about three pimento peppers. These are just seasoning peppers. Very high in flavor but very low in heat. Add some hot peppers, I'm adding two hot peppers, some curry leaves or carapile leaves as we call it in Trinidad, some garlic cloves, some scallion or we call it saive in Trinidad, and some shadow benny or bandania, also called culantro or ricao. Add a very little bit of water just to get the motor going and blend that until everything's nice and chopped. This is the most important part in a good Trini curry duck, the seasoning. So you want to season it up really well, you want it to marinate really well so that all those flavors could soak into the meat. That's how you get a good trim curry duck. So first I'm going to add some salt. You can add whatever type of salt you want, I'm just adding sea salt. I'm also going to add those seasoning peppers or pimento peppers. If you wanted, you could chunk it as when you chunk it in your garlic and onion and everything. But I like to season it up with it. Now you want to add your tomatoes. This part is optional. I like to season it up with some of that hot and spicy duck and goat curry powder. So we're just gonna add a little bit. And I'm not gonna say this is any traditional recipe, okay? So this is just my vision. This is how I grew up making curry duck. This is how my mom taught me. So I'm not saying this is a traditional recipe. You guys can make it however you want. And you could share your versions of it with me in the comment section below. I'm also adding this Taj Madras curry. Add a little bit of that jeera as well as the masala. Now you're gonna go in with your spoon or your hands and give it a good mix. Massage the curry and everything in there. So now that that's well massaged and all this curry is going to soak into the meat, now we're going to add the most important part of this seasoning, the green seasoning. So I'm just going to keep back a little bit 
to add to the pot while it's cooking. That looks perfect and it smells amazing. That green seasoning mixed with the curry smells so good because the green seasoning has hot peppers in it. So if you can't tolerate that pepper on your hands, then wear gloves or just use a spoon. So what you want to do is place this in your fridge overnight or you can cook it right away if you want to, but marinating it is the best way to go. So I'm going to put mine in the fridge for a couple hours and then I'll come back and show you guys how to cook it. Similarly, the good curry duck is cooked on a fireside or a cholha. And the main reason that this method produces really perfect meals every time is because of the high heat that it gives off. This is why cast iron pots and Dutch ovens are the best cookware to cook with. So I highly recommend it. Because it retains a lot of heat and it cooks the food evenly. So I just bought this new cast iron Dutch oven pot. It's a very heavy bottom pot. So I wanna try it out to cook this curry duck. And this is why a lot of Trinbagonians, they have this these cast iron pots in their homes. And that silver pot that I always cook with and you guys hate it. Well, a lot of you all hate it because you always comment about it. Like telling me if that's the only pot I have. But the reason why I only cook with that pot is because because it's cast iron, the food comes out way different than if you cook it in non-stick. So, most of our Trini foods taste much better in cast iron. And I'm sure any food would taste way better in cast iron than it would taste in non-stick. So I try to only cook in cast iron. So I'm gonna put my heat on high. And I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut oil in there. So I'm going to add the onions in now. So after that minute and a half now, go ahead and add your curry leaves. The minced garlic. as well as your hot pepper. I'm also just gonna add a little bit of that chopped bandana or shadow bunny. So after another minute, you wanna lower your heat all the way down. Now we're gonna add the curry. So I'm gonna add that duck and goat in there, duck and goat curry powder. the madras curry powder jeera masala let it toast for a little bit and add some water the trick to cooking a good curry is to make sure that it cooks properly in that oil and in the water because if the curry is not cooked properly it's not gonna taste as well as it usually tastes and also it's gonna upset your stomach so you'll get acid reflux and all those other things so it's important that you let this cook properly for about two to three minutes and my cue to when the curry is finished cooking is when I add the water, I put it to about medium heat and I let it cook down and it, it'll get that grainy consistent. So that water will dry up and you'll notice that the curry is gonna separate and it's gonna look kinda sandy like sand. And you'll see it separating. So I'll show you how that looks when it's ready. 
so the curry is at the perfect stage now I hope you guys could see the texture of it so it's kind of separated and clumped up together <clears throat> so this is how it's supposed to look so now it's just time to add your seasoned duck in there So this initial part is called chunky in it. So chunking just means to fry in hot oil. So we fried up the pepper, we fry up the onion, the curry leaf or the carapile leaf and everything else. We fry that up in the hot oil. So we chunk it everything. So scrape out your bowl because this is gold right here. You don't want to waste all these seasonings. Now what we're gonna do is let the duck release its natural juices and as Bat would say let it bunge. So bunge means just letting it release its juices and then dry down. So for this step you want to make sure your heat is on high and just let it do its thing now. And I don't like to cover it at this stage because when you cover it, that liquid that's released, it's not gonna dry down. It's just gonna stay in the pot and just steam in there. So leave it open, let that cook evenly, let it release all the juices. And then as soon as it's finished, I'll come back and show you what to do for the next step. So I want you all to see the natural juices that the duck is releasing there. Sorry about the smoke. That's because of the high heat. So I'm gonna let it do its thing and I'll show you how it looks when it's finished. So after your duck dries down or bunges like this, you'll see it starting to kind of stick to the bottom of the pan. And that is your cue to start adding some hot water or some boiling water. So I'm adding some hot tap water. And it took about 15 or 20 minutes. I would say 20 minutes it took to get to this stage to bunge completely. So I'm going to add enough water to cover the duck. So a lot of people tell me that they add coconut milk to the duck. Fresh coconut milk. So at this point, if you want to add some coconut milk, you could add it. My preference is I like that really strong curry flavor. So I'm not going to add any coconut milk to mine, but you could if you want. So what I'm going to do is add this extra seasoning that I reserved earlier. I'm going to add that in. Now you want to cover it and let it cook in that curry sauce. And it's just gonna soak up all that curry flavor of the seasonings and everything and then we'll have the perfect curry duck in about 30 to 45 minutes so I'll check you guys back in about 20 minutes we'll see what's going on and then I'll tell you what to do next so it's been about 20 minutes so I'm just gonna raise the lid here and see what's going on so it reduced to about half of the amount of liquid that I put in there well, not half, but about three quarter. So this next stage is we're gonna leave it to cook without the cover so that some of that liquid reduces and it develops a nice thick sauce. I do want a lot of sauce in mine, but if you don't, then you wanna let it reduce completely to how you want it. If you're making this as appetizers or cutters, let it reduce completely because you want that dry curry coating on the outside but if you're gonna eat it with rice and dal like i am i'm gonna leave a little bit of gravy as well as if you eat it with roti if you eat it with roti you need a lot of gravy to dip so it's totally up to you but at this stage it's still a little too soon to take off because the gravy is still watery so i'm gonna let it reduce to a little bit more probably like 
half this amount and at this stage I'm gonna go in with the chopped shadow benny or bandania and I'm also gonna add the sive or the scallions in I like the sive to cook a little bit but if you want to garnish it garnish the duck with it then wait until it's finished and you turn off the heat and then add it so that looks perfect there So I hope you guys enjoyed this really spicy and flavorful Trinidad curry duck. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me if you make yours the same. Tell me if you make it differently. I would love to hear from you. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Just remember that every duck is different. So some duck might take longer to cook than some. Mine doesn't take that long to cook because it's a softer duck. Sometimes if you get a harder duck, you'll need to add more water and let it boil down a little bit more. So that's just a little tip for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the recipe. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Share it with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. And leave me all your comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you all in my next one. Bye.